Hey guys, this is John, and welcome to another Climbing the Rating Ladder game. I'm playing Aldous D, 1965, another Brazilian opponent. My last opponent in this series was Brazilian. Yeah, so let's open with D4. My opponent plays G6. We can take this into uh, Peart's Modern Territory if we want. I can try to play C4, keep it in um, more D4-type territory, but let's go E4. And Black does play D6. Okay, I'm going to go Knight F3. Could also play some system with F4, looking to develop in front of the pawn. Uh, or sorry, get the pawn up and then develop the knight behind. Okay, Black plays Knight F6. So th this prevents setups like Bishop C4. So I'm going to go ahead and play simply Knight C3 to defend this pawn. Yep, Bishop G7. Tuck the bishop on e2. If I go to c4 now, there is a chance that at some point in the next couple moves, black will do knight takes e4. And then when I recapture with my knight, play d5, the center fork trick. So that's why I'm parking the bishop here. This is standard play in this line. Castles. So this variation is, I'd say, more calm than some of the other variations. The sharper lines you can play against the Pirates Modern. But good fundamental way to play. We have control of the center, center, the pawn duo on e4 and d4. Knights on f3, c3, looking to build around that center. Probably be impatient as to pushing these pawns in particular. We're not looking to play e5 too soon. That's a mistake a lot of players make. That can easily get you overextended. Now, black does go here, and having just said that, <laughs> this does cross my mind because sometimes e6, specifically with that knight on uh, d7 can be annoying for black. Just thinking here if it's the right moment to do so. On the previous move, black could have played c6. Uh, knight c6 was another move. Bishop g4 you sometimes see. So just kind of thinking here if, if it makes sense to push e5. Because if we get a pawn trade here, I really do like this e6 move. I think that's an excellent idea for white. You know, the only thing that concerns me after e5 is if black plays knight e8. But I'm thinking at minimum, at that point, I can play bishop f4 and kind of build around that pawn. So I'm really liking the look of this. It's funny, we're only six moves into the game, and I feel like we played all logical moves so far, but this one hits my radar as maybe being inaccurate for black. So I'm pausing, trying to gather myself and thinking if this move makes sense in reply. And I'm going to try it. Because, yeah, clearly black has blocked their defense of the e5 square. Um, and I've got the knight supporting the pawn. So it's it's not a question of the knight of the pawn safety now. Mostly a question, is e6 going to be good for me in the near future? So, for example, if black plays knight g4 and triple attacks that pawn, watch for me to play e6, f takes e6. And then a move like knight g5. We might see this in the game. Okay. Uh, in fact, if it goes down that way, I think that's going to be a substantial, if not winning, advantage. Just trying to predict what my opponent's going to do. I mean, maybe on e6, they'll move this knight. But that can't, can't be what black would like here. E takes f7. Black wouldn't be able to take with the rook even because the queen would hang on d8. Yeah, so let's play this as intended. You know, I've stressed the importance of when you're creating a pawn break, when you're pushing a pawn, contacting the enemy formation, you can have two points of contact. Okay, two points of contact. I think I coined that term. <laughs> uh, but to me, it's just a way of saying that when you do that, it's much harder for the opponent to um, ignore the pawn break or especially push past the pawn break because something else will be under attack. Right? So I am forcing black to resolve this situation, and not simply push their pawn past. Black does take. Yeah, so if I play knight d4 here, I'm really struggling to figure out what black can do that makes any sense, because the knight's hit. I'm threatening knight takes e6 with the fork. So I think I'm going to win at least an exchange, uh, maybe even an extra pawn. I can envision... Taking here, and then when the when the black queen goes to e8, taking on c7, and actually going for this rook on a8 instead of the f8 rook. Because the key thing is, with knight g5, I'm hitting the knight, and even black moving this knight 
is not going to help, right? Bishop takes g4. If black takes my queen on d1, I retreat the bishop safely. So let's go ahead and play knight g5. Taking my time here, maybe a little more time than I need to, but just dotting our I's, crossing our T's, um, trying to anticipate any way this could potentially go wrong. Because if I'm right here, I think I'm winning. So it, it pays if you have that time to take it. You know, I was looking at stuff like knight takes h2, knight takes f2, bishop takes c3, all these potential in-between moves. But I think this is pretty bleak for black. I think black more or less has to move this knight and allow knight takes e6. Yeah, I like how this is labeled as the Pierce defense classical quiet system. Then we have this position after 10 moves. <laughs> so even though this is the quiet system, we can make use of a, a pawn break idea. And, you know, I have to admit, in creating this content, when you get a game like this, the first thing I think of is, should I even post this? You know, I don't want to write this off as a victory too soon, but it's not looking good for black. I think this is... A decisive advantage, probably plus four, plus five at this stage is my honest assessment here. Uh, but I think regardless, I'm still going to post it because this is an idea, the two points of contact, and specifically this E5 and possibly E6 idea that may be useful in your games. So I want you guys to see this. So yeah, knight takes E6, fork the queen and the rook. Yeah, now I could cash in here right away, but why not go pick up this one too with tempo on the queen? We can probably write that, off, that night off. I mean, good chance that I end up losing that night. Um, but we can pick up another pawn. Looking for anything else that might make sense, like a bishop c4 move. Maybe I could throw in queen f7. I mean, even that looks really, really good for me. But hard to argue with simply knight takes c7 here. Yeah, let's play it. Black does play queen f7, so no bishop c4 anymore. Black does guard this square. Let's pick off the rook. And unfortunately for black, when their queen is not on d8, they're not guarding the c7 square, so now my knight may in fact escape through that square. So I think black's sense of danger definitely let them down when I played e5. I think as black in that position, you need to pause. Even if you think you played that before and assess your options, because I think actually after the capture, black's probably in trouble. So I think black has to play knight e8 there. I was looking forward to playing bishop f4 perhaps. Maybe I would have entertained e6. We'll take a look at that in the analysis. Okay, knight c5. Probably back the knight out. Don't see why not. I'm scanning for any threats here. I could play bishop e3, but then... Gives black a chance to play something like knight, knight e6 or knight a6, although then I could pick off this pawn. Yeah, bishop e3 actually looks pretty good as well. This is a developing move. Let's say bishop e3, knight e6, um, bishop takes a7, or even bishop c4, I really like the looks of. Uh, looking for knight c7. Maybe b6 will be played. Yeah, let's just play knight c7. Feels like we're splitting hairs a bit between bishop e3 and moving the knight out. I'm sure they're both plenty good. So let's not make things more difficult on our, ourselves. And also, just to mention something, uh, it may appear when the game is won and someone, myself, another content creator, is making a video creating instructive content based on the game, that they're relaxing and that they're disinterested. Trust me, I, I've been around chess long enough to know that uh, this game can turn on a dime, this game of ours. <laughs> and you can never relax until the clocks are stopped, until the game is over. You have to have this sense of danger that borders on paranoia. 
No joke. Because your opponent is often desperate in these situations. They're looking for any possible way to get back in the game. I'm going to win another piece here. But make no mistake, like I am trying to practice the same tactical vigilance as I started with on move one. Okay, thank you to Aldous D for the game. This is just a random opponent that I played. Just tell them thanks for the game. Uh, hope that doesn't come off as rubbing it in. You never know, but yeah, not my opponent's best game, but it was instructive, even though it was a very short one because that E6 idea, something that should be on your radar for both sides. And in many, many openings, you can see this uh, two points of contact operation. So I do believe at this point after E5, black should move the knight. And specifically, I think they should play knight E8. After which I probably would have played bishop F4 and built around this pawn. Maybe look for a moment to play E6. But let's check out the theory. I think this is a moment where I will personally be curious what the most frequently played moves are. You know, I think they're going to be one of these three moves. Those might be the top three. Maybe, oh, okay, A6 gets played a lot too. So this one, this one, this one, and pawn to C6. I think those are the four most popular. The position somewhat resembles a King's Indian, right? Because black has a King's Indian setup. It's just that white has this pawn on C2 instead of C4. If you want to boil it down to it, that's the thing that distinguishes the Pierce from the King's Indian, which is interesting because the Pierce or the King's Indian, they're, they're openings for black, but in fact, they're distinguished by how white has handled them in a strange way. I don't think I've actually really thought about that properly until I'm saying it now, but <laughs> I think that's the fundamental difference, right? Someone correct me if I'm wrong, because if my pawn is here, that's a King's Indian position. I wouldn't have been castled yet because uh, that requires an extra move for white. But hmm. I'll, just th I'll do some further ruminating on that. So yeah, we'll check the theory here. We'll check if e5 is good. And we'll check if my um, assumption that black should play knight e8 here is correct. And that other moves probably get black in trouble. Like knight h5 runs into the classic, absolutely classic g4 knight trap with the knight unable to go to f4 because of the coverage here and the pawn covering f6. Knight g4 may be playable, but uh, also probably not. Runs into the same thing here. I mean, black could bail by moving this knight at this point, but it's not good, and it's going to run into similar problems with knight g5. Let's click into the game review. Hey, 99%. I'll take it. <laughs> so it started life as a d4 game, and then when my opponent played g6, I do think e4 is Probably the best move here. Again, if you really want to keep it in C4 territory, like you're a queen's pawn player and you want to keep it in D4 territory, you can play this one, you know, like this, looking for some transposition to a king's Indian, um, maybe a, a Benoni. Black can do stuff like this, go into the Jinji Indian if they want. There are some offbeat lines here, but E4 is the most principled, just establishing the pawn duo, yeah, D6 or Bishop G7. And I just choose a pretty conventional development here. Yeah, had black played bishop g7, I might have played this line with bishop c4. actually kind of like this system. We're on knight f6, then you play queen e2 to defend, and you still look to play e5. That's geared around playing the move e5. In fact, if you guys have seen the um, Immortal King Walk game, or I uh, forgot if it has another name, but basically the game that Nigel Short won against uh, Jan Timmen, and I think 91, which is the game that Nigel Short says he gets recognized for all the time, it was from this opening. So this line with bishop c4 and queen e2. You can check that out if you're curious. But yeah, with knight f6, black hits this pawn, and that prevents this whole setup because obviously I don't want to lose this pawn. Also, do not play e5 too early here, right? That's, that's a common mistake I see people make after takes, and especially pawn takes. You don't want any part of this where you're going to be scrambling to defend your pawns. And white's going to be exposed as being overextended here. They can defend that pawn for a little bit, but not good. Not good with black having multiple attackers here. Uh, also, white can't castle. So do not push e5 too soon. So knight f6, knight c3, bishop g7, bishop e2. 
Again, if I play bishop c4, looks pretty natural, but consider after castles, castles, what black can do here. They can play this center fork trick if they want. Knight takes e4. In fact, I think I've stumbled into this in some blitz games in the past, where if knight takes e4, d5, wins back the piece, also busts up the center. Maybe white thinks about this, but I don't think this is much for black to worry about. They have the bishop pair, also two center pawns against one. So that's why we're putting the bishop on e2. You might ask, why not d3? It's another possible square, but I think allowing bishop g4 in the near future with a pin is, is not as good. So bishop e2 kind of fits the bill here. Yeah, so we castle, and this is where I was curious about the exact theory. Let's check it out. Lots of games from here. Yeah, so c6 is the top move. c6 is preparation for queen c7 and e5, oftentimes, or potentially b5, if black wants to start expanding on the queen side. You see that a lot. And that is why, let me shrink my camera here. That is why white often plays a4 in this exact position, trying to stop b5. So c6, pretty common. Yep, bishop g4 is the second most common. Knight c6, a6. All right, I still got it, guys. I nailed the top four moves that black plays here. <laughs> Some games with c5, but look at knight bd7. The first thing I notice about that is the spike in the win percentage for white. Like all these are like hanging around 35%, even down to 29% win percentage for white. Yeah, some of these black actually scores better. Could be a sample size thing. You got to look at the average ratings in situations like that too. Um, so that that's pretty consistent. But then all of a sudden, white's winning 45% of the games. Black only wins 24% of the games after this knight BD7 move. So yeah, it makes me think this E5 move it's just simply good for white, even more so than um, what I was thinking in the game. Yeah, so let's take a, a peek here with the engine. Turn off the feedback, turn on the lines. Yeah, interesting. So initially, the engine only says a quarter pawn. I wonder if that's going to go up as we navigate through this. Yeah, also interesting. Okay. The engine does say D takes is, is playable. Um, why is that the case? Okay, so it's, it's only if black does play this. Knight D, E, 5. Hmm. Yeah, I wouldn't have minded playing this position at all. Uh, but that does make sense, because as played, I think after this, this is looking busted. Mm, yeah, if black has to play knight takes F2 here, looking for... Um, a pawn at least for the material that will be lost, then that's that's not looking too hot. Yeah. I feel like this almost understates the advantage even. I guess black has a couple pawns. Might be mildly difficult for white to get through here, but that should be winning for white. So I think definitively this is the losing move. And black probably has to try their luck with this knight D to E5 move. Queen defended by the rook. Bishop striving to get in the action. And I have not moved this knight back, uh, moved this knight yet. And if I take here, black can take back with their knight, crucially. Yeah, I probably would have taken here. Knight takes f7, because if rook takes, queen is lost. King takes doesn't look too appetizing. So knight takes f7. Yeah, bishop c4 looks kind of nice here. Definitely would not have minded playing this position for white. Equal material. Black has a weakness on e7 pin to deal with kind of uncoordinated pieces but black's in the game i mean that's not a huge advantage for white so black's black's still hanging around but yeah after this knight g5 it's trouble so let's just go back to this moment in practice what does black tend to do here so in 71 of the 78 games these are higher level games to reach this position black has played 98 they have retreated refraining from opening the position, ostensibly because the d-file favors white if this pawn trade happens, right? Where black can't take. And we saw in the game, like, the, uh, the deadly nature of the e6 move under the right circumstances. So that appears to be why black plays 98. And I was going to go bishop f4 here. You know, I guess thinking about it now... 
even bishop f4 isn't strictly necessary because it's not like black is like let's say i played just something like h3 not that i would do this but just for the sake of argument pawn takes pawn takes black still cannot take on e5 because that queen is undefended as soon as the knight leaves here so that's even a further wrinkle maybe bishop f4 is unnecessary even though it looks like a decent move uh, that's why something like bishop g5 is possible bishop c4 even kind of a nice looking move too maybe prop up the e6 move i think e6 here as a pawn sacrifice probably misses the mark take knight g5 unlike the game we're not hitting a piece on g4 so black just has to deal with this one threat yeah knight d to f6 the bishop links up computer seems to think i have compensation here but probably no more So I'm going to rem remember that, that bishop f4, this whole line of play is good for me, or good for white, but even that is not strictly necessary, and bishop c4 is possible too because of the pin going on. Note bishop takes e5, also not good, knight takes e5. Black can't take back. Okay, so as played, yeah, still not too late for knight e8, but this version looks much, much better. And again, the reason is, when this occurs, black cannot move this knight if the d-file is open. So that trade that black made on e5, that was a pretty snap decision, I think, for black. Yeah, they actually gained time with that move. This is a 10 plus 5 game. They gained time with that, but that actually had a major impact on the position. Black was lost in uh, a couple more moves, basically, as soon as they play this and allow knight g5. Let's just quickly see if I missed anything major after this. Took on e6 when black saved the piece. Yep, go after this. Thought for a second about this move. I think it's also good. But I don't even think it's worth wanting to consider stuff like this. This is just a different way to win material. Two pieces for a queen. Pretty happy with knight takes c7. Yep, scoop the rook. Black could have tried queen d8 take and then something like b6 and look to win the knight i do have moves like bishop f4 trying to get this out maybe e5 for black yeah it looks like knight b5 also possible another move to try to rescue the knight so i think the position's beyond hope even if i had to sacrifice this knight for a pawn a lot of the damage has been done white would still be up significant material at that point Yep, and I mentioned bishop e3, knight c7. These approaches are both winning. This was another blunder for black, but the position's losing regardless. Black resigned because of this, winning another piece. Okay, so a good reminder to constantly be vigilant and check your basic assumptions, even in the opening. You don't want to be in a position where you played a series of what seemed to you to be standard moves, and then your opponent does something that um, maybe was a bit of a deviation from what you expected, and you just continued blitzing past that point. You didn't stop and think, hey, is my normal setup, uh, my normal expectations, are they valid here, or should I stop to think? And if you're ever in doubt, you should err on the side of stopping and thinking, gathering yourself, and assessing the risk in the position, trying to anticipate the opponent's threats, because... You can tell by this player's rating that they're a good player, but they completely let their guard down within the first 10 moves of this game. All right, I hope that was useful. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. And uh, yeah, thanks for your positive comments as I've been back to recording here a little bit. My voice feels good. I've been dealing with um, a voice disorder. If you happen to miss the last video, something called muscle tension dysphonia. Um, but seeing all your comments has been really, really nice. So thank you very much, guys. I'm so lucky to have you guys as viewers. I, I do greatly appreciate it. So we'll keep, we'll keep rolling here. All right. Thanks again, everyone. I'll see you again soon with another video.